Hello neighbors and welcome back to the channel here. I'm Christopher Henry and today we're going to be learning staggered 16th notes, okay, through the arpeggio. This is one of our main three Monroe devices along with the bouncy lick and the slidey lick. Might be the most important one, so let's listen to it and see what's going on with it. Super cool. So let's hear what our friend, the amazing Wyatt Ellis has to say about staggered 16th notes. Staggered 16th notes are some of the best devices to play with a lot of power and flow. I thought I'd demonstrate that power and flow right now on Why Did You Wonder? One, two, three, four. y'all can take these 16th notes and put them into your own improvisation. Those are some pretty advanced modulations. So years ago, there was a video that got uploaded to YouTube on the staggered 16th notes. Maybe some of y'all have seen that. Looked a little different back in those days. You might have connected with the teaching. We're going to go over it again in a little bit of a more systematic way through the 1-4-5-1 progression like a Blue Ridge Cabin Home, Your Love's Like a Flower, Gospel Tunes, all that kind of stuff. Nine Pound Hammer, Little Maggie. Okay, so put on your seat belts and here we go with the stagger 16th notes. Let's think about some other places that we might have heard this device. Okay, so this is a texture that you might remember from Bill Monroe tunes like Pike County Breakdown. <laughs> so on and so forth, Patty on the Turnpike. <laughs> Something like that, Monroe's Hornpipe, the list goes on and on. Okay, maybe even on and on. All right, so we're gonna learn it as a one bar lick. That is if we're counting the quarter notes as the strong beats. So one, two, three, four, okay? So we're gonna learn 14 16th notes and one eighth note at the end. It's gonna sound like this. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and. Okay. We're going to learn about how to drop the last 16th up to the open string to connect it all together a little bit later. So we're going to learn it in G, and the secret to the staggered 16th notes is that every new note is going to start with an upstroke, okay? So you play your first 16th note as a downstroke, and then move through the rest of the arpeggio sequence with an upstroke, then a downstroke on each new note, okay? So one E and a two E and a three E and a four E so here are the pick strokes. Down, up, 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 down. So hopefully you know your major G arpeggio. If you don't, it's open G, fourth fret of the G, open D, fifth fret of the D, second fret of the A, fifth fret of the A, third fret of the E. Okay? So we're coming up through that major G arpeggio with the staggered technique. Okay, so it's down, up, 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 down. And as you can see, once we get to the top G, we're coming back down the arpeggio, then we're going to play an up and a down on the fifth fret of the A, and that's where it's going to stop. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and. Okay. So if you haven't got that, go ahead and stop the video and work it out until you do. All right, so one of the main mistakes I see people making a lot, having taught this so many times, is that a lot of folks have a tendency to play a down and an up on the first note. But the first note is just a downstroke, and then you're moving on the upstroke. So it's not like this. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. That's not the staggered technique. The staggered is a downstroke on the first note, then moving through the rest of the sequence with an up, then a down on each new note. So down, up, 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 down. So please don't make that mistake. And please, as always, don't write any of this down. That's not how we learn by ear. And now we're gonna move on to the C chord, okay? So same kind of idea in C. Okay, so we're coming up through the three finger chop chord in C. And just in case you don't know what that is, let me show you. All right, it's fifth fret of the G, second fret of the D, fifth fret of the D, third fret of the A, and then reaching up here to the seventh fret of the A, and getting your third fret of the E. That's the whole thing. So in single notes, and you come back down, and stack arpeggio. All 
right? You can also do that in D, but we're gonna learn something else. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and. All right, so coming up through your chop chord arpeggio, up to the seventh fret of the A, up to the third fret of the E, back down to the seventh fret of the A, and you gotta do it with your little finger if you wanna be able to parlay this to other chord positions. You could use the open E in C. But for our purposes here, let's go ahead and start to use the little finger on the major third on the high octave, which is seventh fret of the A. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and. So again, that's four beats. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that is our C stock standard staggered arpeggio. Okay, so now it's moving on up to D. You could take that same position and do it in D like that, but let's do it open to see how that feels, okay? So, open D, fourth fret, open A, fifth fret of the A, second fret of the E, fifth fret of the E, second fret, ending on the fifth fret of the A. Okay, so one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and. Okay, again, the 14 16th notes and the one eighth note at the end. And so now we have our one, four, five progression if we do the G one again. So the whole progression is going to be like this. But before we do, please, please like, like and, and subscribe. subscribe. Go ahead and hit that little bell there for the notifications. And you'll get all the good stuff from Noy Mountain Music. Thank you. And please consider becoming a patron on patreon.com slash Noya Mountain Music. just so we can get to know it okay you can modulate it and you can add it with the other devices slidey bouncy for more variety and texture obviously but this is a great stock lick to know how to do in G and in every key okay so now we got our one four five one progression this would be like for you know Blue Ridge Cabin Home there's a well Reverse it and double your money by starting on the top note, third fret of the E. So notice this time after the open G, we're coming back to the fourth fret of G. And you can start on the top note of our C arpeggio. And you can come back up like that, or you can play the open G. It's very expansive and modular. You know, you can do it so many different ways. And then in D, you know, we start on the open D. You can start on the high note, fifth fret of the E. That would work fine. You can come all the way down to the second fret of the G. And on the open D, and then come down through your G arpeggio again. Could you start on your high major third? Sure. Could you come down through the high C? And on the open G or the second fret of the D? Sure. Same thing in D. You sure could. Okay, so right now, you got two good ways to do it up and down. Okay, so that's a 1 4 5 1 progression, Blue Ridge Cabin Home, so many other ones. And you want to get to know this as a modular lick, so you can just put it in there when you want it. Say you want to play like you know, Blue Ridge Cabin Home, lead with the staggered 16th notes gambit, and then come into the melody over the C chord. A little bouncy there at the end of it. Okay, so it's totally good. You know, what about like, will the circle be unbroken? about finding where that melody note of the second bar is when you're done doing your stagger 16th notes bar. You know, we've covered 
that in the last uh, you know, couple, three videos, going from uh, the slidey lick to the bouncy lick through the gospel set, all that kind of stuff. Let's see what happens when we take it up to A. Okay, all right, so A is a little bit of a different ball game because you don't have those open strings. So you gotta do them with your first finger, ring finger, and first finger on the G and the D strings. Okay, so you play your first three notes. Okay, so now we're gonna come up through the chordal arpeggio. So you play your first three notes, one E and a two, and you make a slight transition into your chord form, which is the A chop chord. And again, you continue your staggered 16th notes texture with the upstroke and the downstroke. So you got one E and a two, E and a three, E and a four, E and, all right. Come into D. Now you can use the infinity pattern. Well, what's the infinity pattern? There is a video on it. Check it out if you want to. Which works the same way with the texture. So you're starting on a downstroke, moving it on an upstroke. Okay, you come down through the high major third. All right. So say you're doing like your love's like a flower, one, four, one, five progression. You know, something like that. So you have a split bar staggered texture at the end. Maybe a little simple, you know, arpeggio there at the end. If you want to do that, you can do it the other way down. A little bounce down there. Okay. So this is a very quick primer on the staggered 16th notes. You can definitely do it with the uh, infinity pattern up here. There's a video covering that. You can check out coming down from the high major third of the full chord. Coming up through the D chord. That's infinity backwards. That's the staggered technique. Okay, so you're just starting on the third, coming up through the infinity coming down through the high major third regular arpeggio shape. Lift up through your chord D, backwards to infinity. And if you're not familiar with the infinity pattern, check the video out. Okay, so that was a little primer on the old stagger 16th notes. Like, so what's going on in like, you know, Pike County Brigham? It's basically the staggered arpeggio with just one extra note. In this case, it's the major sixth, fourth fret of the D. So that whole lick, very staggered. that okay so I mentioned that we can connect the upstroke at the end of the whole thing to make it a little bit more fluid let's discuss that real quick so we learned it with an eighth note at the end if you want to grab the upstroke after that on the open A before going into your C chord same thing in C you just drop down to the string underneath the fret that you just played to finish out the bar slow but sped up it sounds fun it's a little trick that you can make it more fluid that way so one of our next videos coming up is going to be about synthesizing our three main merit badges Monroe style devices the slidey lick the stagger 16th notes, and the bounce lick three licks being able to switch and swap with a melody you have nearly infinite creative possibilities that you can use for your improvising all right all right could you make a whole break with just the staggered 16th notes for say a song like little maggie up in the key of b let's try it So you 
sure could, you know. <laughs> so you're coming up through the stagger 16th notes in B, down through A, and then a split bar between B and F sharp. Finish up the little arpeggio tag, then you come down the other way. All right, that's down from the high major third in B, up through the infinity arpeggio in uh, A. And then again, a little tag. Split bar and then the little you know, slidey tag. So you can do this on any number of tunes and I recommend this is great practice for going through like simple jam session material, Mountain Dew, Worried Man Blues, Nine Pound Hammer sitting on top of the world and just staggering your way through the chord form. So like, you know, uh, uh, Nine Pound Hammer. Nine Pound Hammer, little baby, for my side, buddy for my side. Narrow line, buddy, don't you roll so slow. How can I roll when the blues won't go? Nine Pound Hammer. Just a little too heavy, buddy for my size, buddy for my size. Now I'm on, buddy, don't you roll so slow, buddy how can I roll, when the wheels won't go, you get it? So you're coming up through A, up through D, and then you got a split bar at the end, so it was splitting the stagger 16th notes between A and E. Again, dropping your last... 16th note of the bar down to the open string underneath the fret you just played. In this case, open D, hitting the, the five chord, E. And then just a little tag. I mean, you could do stagger 16th notes for the tag. It'd be fine, but you know, maybe something else is good. Whatever you like there. Okay. So the next level of this is to be able to modulate it with the melody. So you can start your melody notes where the stagger 16th notes start also. So in this case, you know, the melody starts on the one. Oh, the nine pound hammer. So you can start your stagger 16th notes there. And figure out where the next bar starts with the melody. Is it a little too heavy, heavy? So starting on the fifth of D. You know, you see what's going on there? And then, buddy for my size, again on the one. And then the E starts. Buddy for my size, you could use that as a melody. So you're reflecting a little bit more of the melody rather than just the abstract arpeggio. Okay, now roll on for the second bar. bar slidey at the end. So hopefully you're getting the idea. Staggered 16th notes for the win for sure. Merit badge, Monroe device. This might be the number one Monroe device to know if you're going to learn any of them. Okay. Learn to stagger your way through everything. Try it out on all the gospel tunes. I'll fly away. I saw the light. Swing low, sweet chariot, all that stuff. Anything you can think of, try the stagger technique through the chord structure and then mix and match weaving the melody in there and see how you can start the stagger 16th note on the melody note that you're looking for and then hit that on the next chord, so on and so forth. It'll take a little time to get the muscle memory happening, but if you stick with it, it will be very rewarding for your improvising. All right. So hope you enjoyed this lesson here. So if you like what's going on on the channel, please think about becoming a Noia Mountain Music patron. Patreon.com slash Noia Mountain Music. Please like and subscribe and put a little comment in the you know comment section about what you like, what you want to learn, what you're connecting with, all that kind of stuff. We really appreciate that. All right. So we'll see you on the next one. Adios. And please consider becoming a patron on Patreon.com slash Noia Mountain Music.